So I was thinking okay. it would just take a few photos, but not video necessarily. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Fine. Okay. Thank just you. let you know what I'm doing over here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, the qu question would be, uh, were you already musicians before you met the two of you? Or is it something you started once? Uh, we were um, nine when we met. Yeah, we've known so, each other a long time. Yeah. I think, no, I don't think I'd tell you anything about that was nine. <laughs> no, we met in school. Yeah. We were in the same small school and grew up in, I guess, by the time we were... 12 or 13, you were in the band, school band sure. playing percussion and, and singing with my family. And singing, that's right. Yeah. You, actually, you you probably were I probably singing, singing. singing. We were all singing before. Yeah. But. Yeah. So it's only once uh, you were together that you realized that your voices blended? Yeah, I guess we. Yeah, I don't know. We always kind of we liked music. We liked the same, a lot of the same kind of music when we were young, so mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. bonded on that. and. I don't know, to me, listening and loving music just seemed natural to also sing and want to play guitar and make okay. music. So you started low right away, or did you try other stuff? No, we were... You were in a few different bands. I was bands. in a different band, kind of. I was in a few bands when I was 18, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah, then, I don't know. Okay. I just came <laughs> to a point, like, realized, like, no, I think I'd rather... I think I'd rather try something okay. different and do it with, with maybe. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you're going to take this one, but do you think does the name of the band have anything to do with the mood of your first early albums? For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the name the name <clears throat> came early on as we were sort of trying to kind of figuring out what we wanted to do and what we were inter interested in and what we wanted to experiment with. And uh -huh. Yeah, the name came early on and just and it just immediately it was just made sense and right. mm -hmm. seemed to be, it's minimal and sort of, it's evocative of a certain feeling, feeling. so it's, okay. been, it's been good. And at the start of the band, did you set out to make a career out of low? Did you, I mean, not necessarily that you could, or see yeah, we certainly become, didn't but, foresee. Um, but, uh, I guess we were I don't know, we cautiously play, optimistic that yeah, we, we were... We played, mm -hmm. Yeah, we wrote a couple songs and played a show and we thought, wow, that actually was really, really engaging and interesting mm -hmm. and made me want to, we just want to do it more. So then, of course, you mm -hmm. allow yourself to dream a little bit. But, but it's never... I mean, and everything was a surprise. We were really surprised when we were invited to... We were invited out to New York to record with Kramer, who's, who did our first record, and mm -hmm. things kind of snowballed from there. He passed the recordings on to somebody in, who had a record label that became interested in it. So it was the things that happened really, I mean, it was very much out of our hands pretty, pretty early mm -hmm. and it started okay. happening. So um, as time went on, more and more cheerful songs appeared in your discography. <laughs> so was it something you could have always done, or did you really become more cheerful over time? <laughs> well, <laughs> Sorry, I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I think <laughs> I think we we maybe lessened our I wouldn't say restraints, but when well, we started, when we first started, it, we it was had, very yeah. We had kind of yeah. We had a very uh, we had a we had a strong idea that mm -hmm. you know we wanted to keep it very minimal, and I guess the mood wasn't necessarily. Well, the mood the mood that first came was just indicative of being minimal, and uh, simple songs. Um, I don't know. I think over time, just you know, inevitably it's going to pop up, and there's going to be some pop songs, and mm -hmm. I think the minute you start trying to write a song and realizing that, okay, what are the possibilities? Uh, sometimes it just comes out of you. I mean, I don't, I don't, we don't sit down and go, okay, let's write some really heavy songs and yeah. talk about how shitty everything is. You know, it's just, it just comes out and if <laughs> something... And it comes out the other way too. It comes out the other way. Sometimes poppy, you'll be yeah. surprised that something, something very 
composite or happy or yeah. optimistic will come out of a time when you're not not at all that way. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's more out of just respecting what what was coming up, and, and you know we. Everything we write, we usually consider and look at and go, well, how do we do this? Is there, is it, is it pushing outside of our envelope in a good way, or, or is it, or is it, or is it something we need to try a different perspective on? So yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, I don't know that we're happier. I think we're just we're. It's the same. It's the same endeavor. It's the same mixture of of hope and frustration. You know? <laughs> well, you're more lively. They do sound more lively still. I mean, you know. Sure. Well, you live a little longer, you know. I mean, when we were younger, it's you. I would. Uh, I don't think we're not cynical, but we were just. I don't know. We were young. We were starting. We we're starting from one place and and slowly yeah, ex and exploring what's possible. And mm -hmm. and uh, I think even our happiest songs actually have some darkness to them. And, I think yeah, to me, I think to me you, that's more interesting. As you interesting. get older, you just realize, well, I can do, we can do whatever we want, and if this comes up, let's do it, and if that comes up, let's do it. And so I think it's, yeah, the older you get, the more mature you realize that you don't have to put yourself in a box. You don't have to see yourself in one one way. You can, you can trust, yeah. yeah. After a while, you trust that whatever you come up with is going to be the right direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's natural, whether it's because you've been doing it for so long or just because eventually you realize that, well, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and, uh, between the, you know, I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce it, whether it's the Owl remix album or the Owl. Owl. Oh, Owl. Owl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Hospital People, it seems that you've always had an interest in electronic music, but you seem to have taken quite some time to fully implement it in your album, <laughs> Rikers. Why is that? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, we've always been... Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we, we've always sort of dabbled in that and, you know, I've, we've always, at home, we have, even from the beginning, I remember we had synthesizers and drum machines and we were all, always experimenting with that and seeing what was happening. I, I think for many years we were more maybe just focused on how we play live you know yeah. when we were playing a lot of live shows and a lot of things were based on that format and different at different times we would try different things I mean hospital people was like a side mm -hmm. project I was doing on four track and then at one point we did one single for a friend and, and stuff but is experimentation yeah I mean mm -hmm. every time you every time you hear you know if we have a record that comes out Usually there's probably a lot of material behind it that mm -hmm. we were experimenting and trying. Maybe we were going this extreme. And you learn something from there, and then you bring it back to right. where where low is. And, and uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I think um, this last record we worked with a producer who was very deep into hip hop and electronic music and. So, and I and I liked his aesthetic with the way he approached that. And so I, it it felt the, like the right, a more honest and fitting way to to kind of push into that element. Um, I mean, you could say I mean the things we're working on now for a new record, you could say are even further, maybe in that direction. But I don't I don't think we see it as the the band is turning from mm -hmm. acoustic electric to electronic. It's, it's, I don't know. We're actually, we're, we're very cautious about that. I don't know if it's because we're Midwestern Americans or something. We're like, oh, electronic music, you know, I mean, <laughs> but there is a little bit of like, well, yeah, this electronic music is where the trend is going, but mm. maybe, maybe we'll just you sit back and you watch and you try elements and you think, okay, is this, is this me? Is this element me? Mm -hmm. No, okay, we'll try that. Oh, okay, I see something I can do with this. Or, you know, it's, it's uh, I don't know. I think we, we like to digest Slowly. things <laughs> at, a, at, a, at a pace that we can really mm -hmm. kind of incorporate it 
honest, honestly, you know. Okay. I'd, ra I'd rather I'd rather it go into me and then come out instead of be like, what is that? Okay, let's do that. Hmm. So um, to this day, you have put out three releases specific to Christmas. What does it represent to you? Well, <laughs> 24, 25 years, you're eventually going <laughs> to eventually pile up a few Christmas songs. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. We the, the, the Christmas record that we did originally was very... Very casual. We when we put it out, we thought it would just be a nice thing to sell to fans at shows, yeah. and maybe just a small thing. But uh, for some reason, over here, it, it, they played it on the radio, and there was some more, you know, like way more attention than we thought. So, yeah, it, it was nice, and it was nice. You know, John yeah. John Peel was very kind to us and really championed the Christmas record, and and. Um, so yeah, in many ways it was a surprise for us. It was yes. something that ended up being bigger. We did, you know, we've done many shows, doing Christmas shows and stuff. And but you did it again. You had a, a, set, a seven inch that came out. As well. yeah. Right. Well, yeah, we did a couple more. <laughs> yeah. So it seems that you have this thing. Well, about if Christmas. you think about it, though, it's taken a while. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> the first one came out in what ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's taken us 17 years to, okay, sure. <laughs> to, to do what? But you, you're not going to do one about songs. Easter. Huh? You're not doing one about Easter. We are not. <laughs> doing oh, no. Easter. It, yeah. Yeah, a, Maybe not, that's not, not, as much, not as much metaphor or imagery. There. Easter joy. <laughs> we don't have that Easter joy, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Which part do you celebrate the death of the, <laughs> the, death of the resurrection? Uh. The fact that you are of Mormon belief has uh, always been part of uh, how the media has portrayed you. Do you personally draw a link between your religion and your music yourself? I, I think it generally sort of, yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if your religion is part of your right. perception about the world and who you are and, and where we're going, uh, that that... It filters in. It filters into everything that you, you come up with. I mean, we've never set out to write, no. you know, him him like songs or never yeah, set out to Yeah, we've never really preach. set out to kind of... Yeah. But I again, think it, yeah. yeah, it just... It comes out. Yeah. It comes out because of who we are. Do you know that, that it comes up in media? Or? Well, you know, it really came out over here in yeah. England for some um, reason. Yeah, America um, there didn't, were many, too scared to yeah, talk about it. Yeah, really. America didn't really dwell on it too much. But it was pretty, pretty novel to the Brits for sure, and, <laughs> and then the rest of Europe, you know, and then Europe kind of yeah. took, took took it on as well. But sure. yeah, know, so I'm not sure why you know if it's really that important of a. I think it's just people. I think the press has picked up on it just because it's novel. You know, there aren't that many. True. You know, you got the Osmonds back in the day and. Yeah. A handful of... A handful of people here and there, yeah. but it's not... Yeah, you don't... I don't know. But, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't mind it. Every, every once in a while, someone will interview us, and they'll kind of come to us, and, and they'll say, okay, well, what about this issue, and what's going on in the world today? And I, I always feel a little bit cautious, because I'm like, well, I'm not an expert, mm -hmm. and I'm by no means a mouthpiece for... The church, you know, it, so I, it, it feels a little awkward sometimes, kind of answering questions that maybe someone should actually right. should ask someone who, someone a little more official in the church. But um, yeah, I don't mind it. I, I think people, when they realize that it's just, you know, it's actually a very open, very open and accepting religion. It's very hopeful, and it. Uh, for better or worse, it, it sort of <laughs> helps navigate the way the world is these days in, in certain ways. But uh, also it's really focused on family, which I don't think anybody can terribly disagree with. I mean, I think that's, mm -hmm. that's probably the key to a hopeful future, is families being strengthened and, and, and supportive of each other. So... Yeah, I'm probably yeah, I'm sort of ramble, but yeah. Why? What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Um, well, Chair Kickers started out as a record label and publishing for other artists, but uh, mm -hmm. its, its activity seems to have slowed down. Yeah, yeah. What That's happened? Significant. Well, <laughs> it was fun. I got to put out a bunch of records yeah. for some friends, and mm -hmm. some of them were able to kind of. It was some of them. It was nice because it kind of got them get kick, kind of gave them a little kickstart and got their career going, and they've been able to move on and do more things, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I started a this, we started a label like at the worst time you could start a label, you know. And I didn't really know how to do it. And I, I, the internet, you know, right when we started, like being able to be good at promoting on the internet was kind of the key. And I, I, I was pretty lost, and it was just too small to really compete. So after we after we lost a certain amount of money, we just thought, okay, well, well, we'll let, we'll let this sit for a while. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah. No, I'm proud of it. There's some there's some good records that we put out, and do you yeah, intend to really fun. do it again? Carry on. I don't know. Yeah, we have yeah. a Black Eyed Snakes record. It's finished, and I need to figure out how to put it out. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to put it out myself again. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, um, well, with each new album, you always manage to offer a, a new unexpected side of you, like drums and drums and guns incorporating more electronics or. Uh, an invisible way, going back to exclusively acoustic right. and electric instruments. Do you, consci do you consciously try to keep people guessing what you're going to do next, or even attempt to throw them off a bit? Surprise them. Uh, Honestly, I would I don't think we that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're guessing all the time. I think, we're always, I think we're always trying to push forward. We're always trying yeah. to see what else is there and, and, and expand, either expand on what we just did or if, we're, if, if we feel like we've kind of reached a point with a certain approach, we like, you know, I like shift, you know, if, you, if there's nothing more mm -hmm. invigorating, just really shifting and forcing yourself to think differently. And yeah, Drums and Guns was very much kind of after Great Destroyer, we had, I felt like we had reached sort of a peak on a certain approach and, and, and it, yeah, I remember actually finishing that record. When we were finishing that record, I had a feeling like, yeah, whatever we do next is going to be definitely a shift. And uh, same with ones and sixes. I felt like that was, with, with Invisible Way, we had a certain thing going, and it really, really kind of arrived, and then just this the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I, I think early on, you know, you kind of wonder, like, oh, I wonder what, what people think of this, you know, but... I don't know. I think we we learned early on that the fans usually responded pretty well to trying stuff. I mean, it, it, mm. yeah, they we'd experiment, and try different elements, and everybody seemed to be pretty open to that. So we, I think, it's never been really a question. We just mm. kind of we just always try to move forward and try to do something. I think if I was a fan of the band, I would probably. I don't know. I, I feel like that's more endearing than them constantly making something that you're always going to like, you know, like I'd rather, I'd rather see them right. struggling to f figure something else out and, and, and sometimes it working, you know. <laughs> okay. So you were commissioned to do an organ piece today, yep. uh, which is quite surprising. How did that come about? Uh, we did a show here yeah. and the... When was it last December? Yeah, December. December we yeah. did a Christmas show here and, and uh, the organ, the curator, the person that oversees the organ mm -hmm. here, was curate, planning this festival, and, <clears throat> and she approached us if we'd be interested in participating. And, I mean, we, it was a pretty, pretty great idea right away, and, and of course, then I spent the next few months going like, oh no, what are we, what are we gonna do? <laughs> exactly. So technically, like, how, how long did it take you to come up with well, a long time? I mean, it's been a... We've, been, we've been writing yeah. stuff off and on, We've been, since we've been recording anyway, so yeah. so we had we had material we we're sort of developing and ideas were coming and then I'd say maybe the last two months have okay. been like okay let's really concentrate let's put this together. Uh, Steve Steve has been yeah working really hard. really working hard on. I mean he's I mean he he's a, he's our bass player but he and he plays mm -hmm. keyboards too. But like learning to run an organ was this really big thing and he really he really jumped into it and really immerse himself into it. So yeah, it's been it's been pretty intense mm -hmm. getting ready and mm -hmm. it's 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 just it's strange because because it's it's such a different palette. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and, f- and arrangement for everything that, yeah, you, it's confusing because all, all the things that you're, you, all the little landmarks that you're used to, like, yeah. oh yeah, that guitar sounds good, okay, the bass sounds good, okay, yeah, the drums sound fine, all those things are gone, so you, you kind of like, oh, it's, it's, it's hard to say, like, is this any good? <laughs> it's like, okay, what is this, and is this a good version of it? You know, so. So is this a one-off, or are you recording it? We're doing a couple. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to record yeah, we'll it a bit. We're gonna, we'll record the shows and mm-hmm. see how that goes, and maybe we'll, okay. like, record it more specific. Yeah, well, we have another Oregon show Monday, Monday in, in Amsterdam. We're doing it again in Amsterdam. Yeah, so two, and then we'll see. Okay. So, what are your future plans? <laughs> Do you have a new album in the works? Yeah. We're gonna finish yeah. this Hopefully latest. Finish it in the next couple months. month or two. Yeah. A couple sessions to finish it up, and then. Yeah. And then we'll see. At the best, maybe spring will come out. Mm-hmm. Hopefully before summer, but. Um, yeah. You're yeah. Use a yet another direction. Uh, well, we're working with the same person who did ones and sixes. Yeah. But it's. It's definitely. Still confusing. Right down the rabbit hole. It's, it's a, a lot more, further down the rabbit hole than we've ever been yeah. with, with it. So I mean, hopefully it'll land on its feet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm almost done. I mean, I uh, just okay. had pretty much technical one to ask you about the albums that you've put out on Vernon Yard at the time. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. They've been re-released on LP, but like some, apparently some people complain that it's just CD transfers. You know, oh. not necessarily. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, do you, yeah. Are you planning to re-release them like properly? Please? Well, honestly, <laughs> I don't think the masters. Would you need the masters to do that? And yeah, I don't know if we've got them. Well, the record know. label might. Well, Vernon. see, Vernon Vernon Yard was a, a subsidiary subsidiary of Virgin, yeah. which then joined in with Universal. Universal. Yeah. And uh, so those tapes are somewhere in the back of someone's <laughs> someone's dirty cardboard box in the back of a closet yeah. somewhere so huh. uh, the reissues yeah we, we don't really we don't have any really control over them right I yeah. mean they, yeah. they own them but it's something you wish to do <clears throat> oh I, yeah I would love to I'd love to be able to remaster them properly and, and you know do a vinyl release I mean yeah the ones that have been done Yeah, well, those on Cranky have just the cranky ones movies. are great. Yeah, cranky, cranky ones, ones are always. Joel yeah. always yeah. does a really good job making sure everything is is, yeah. is good quality with the mastering and stuff, but especially vinyl. But yeah, the reissues that came out recently really were out of our hands. It was just yeah. we just heard about like oh someone's <laughs> licensing the thing and we're like oh okay <laughs> maybe they'll send us a couple copies. So and, it, and it's fine. It it yeah. maybe someday we'll have control over that and, and stuff, but could be worse. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to add, specify? <coughs> or... <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> You'd rather have me not mentioning or no, something? No. I can't, no. You're all right. Well, we've always worked with P.S. in, in France. And <laughs> ours, and I really... Oh, yes. P.S. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 the record. Yeah. And they are always... I don't know, we've been working with them probably longer than... Anyone. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right, right. I really, I, I really enjoy visiting that. Every time we do promotion in Paris, I really enjoy the day with them. There, I don't know if you go and do interviews at their office and stuff sometimes. No. But, mm-hmm. Oh, you should. Yeah, just con any artist. You just contact and say like, hey, when are they doing a press day? And you can go. Yeah. They're really pretty friendly, accommodating. Okay. But they do a lot of different labels and artists and stuff. But. Oh, I, I haven't uh, tried to go through them. I, I asked mm. directly. Right, right, right. right, right. Uh, we've seen you four times. You know, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I was, you know. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Yeah, that's great. I'm trying to yeah. catch you. Yeah. It's the most efficient way great. to get to us. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't, yeah, don't be shy any any time. And like I said, any other artists on PS, you can. Yeah. They're nice people. I'm sure they'd help you if it's possible. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, sure. Good luck for tonight. Yeah, yeah thank you. Everything will go well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for you. Thank 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 you.
Enjoy the night. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy, bye.